when she started inviting us back to do the Tyra show was when I really got a distaste for her. Like, don't like her. Don't like her at all. And she like wouldn't hug some of us. Like when, like she wouldn't say hi to us when we would show up on set. She was just like very, I was just, over, I'm over her. I've been over her for a long time. So there, that's my thoughts on Tyra. Boom. Everybody go. 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 What, what, what is going on, folks? So good to be here. So good to be seen. Listen, I'm just going to cut to this. You know what? Hold on. Before I do that, before I do that, because I upload this video later on to YouTube, and the ANTM fans on YouTube are a lot, and let me tell y'all, I love some of y'all. I love most of y'all. I think most of y'all are great, amazing folks. But it's some of y'all that's going to get beat and then blocked. Listen, these girls come on this platform with me, which is not really a platform. Again, I always tell y'all it's me just being nosy. I'm an Uber fan, and I only like talking about things that I'm interested in. And this is me just being a nosy fan. But listen, these girls are blessing me with their presence. They're blessing me with their the, the tea and all these other things. Don't give these girls a hard time and then make shit hard for me. They're like, oh, I ain't going to fuck with all of them good listen don't give these girls a hard time treat them nice be grateful be thankful okay but anyways tonight i have the pleasure of speaking with shandy sullivan from cycle two of america's next top model listen as i've told you guys i am trying to get all 24 cycles underneath my belt hopefully i can do it so let me see if she's in here Miss Shandy, 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 what she eat? Uh oh, hold on. Let me message her right now. Um, and then, uh, is she here, Miss Shandy? Miss, 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 Miss Shandy. Excuse me, y'all. That was so rude, but I had to let it out. Mm. Is she here? Oh, she's here. What she eat? Mm. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Shandy. How are you? Hi, how are you? I am just exquisite. <laughs> and you? I'm fine. You know, got a little dressed up for you, or tried to, anyways. Uh. Thank you. <laughs> Listen, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for you agreeing to do this with me. I'm like, you know, who's a little crazy guy with this shit in his head asking me to talk about shit that happened 20 years ago? But uh, I'm so grateful. Oh, you're welcome. No, I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Yay! Yay! I did rewatch the cycle um, these past couple of days. So it's all fresh in my brain. But like I said, we've grown this little experience of me going live with the girls now. So now when I post you guys' photos, everyone just does my outline for me. They ask all the questions. <laughs> so I'm just going to be asking a bunch of YouTube questions. We got to shout out, shout out to the people on YouTube that watch this because y'all, <laughs> Shandy, they don't play. <laughs> I bet they don't. <laughs> they do not play. But I also pulled from um, some Instagram questions as well. Okay. Okay, cool. I'm so tired. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, so listen. I'm not an interviewer. I'm just a nosy bitch. So this is going to be very <laughs> unorthodox. <laughs> um, But I just like to have fun. Okay, so here we go. I'm good. So <laughs> I'm not going to ask that one first. Daniel <laughs> Alberto, who is a great, 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 great viewer who's on YouTube, 
is okay. asking, what was not seen from Katie and Zia Mora's drama at panel? Remember they had that whole awkward um, thing? I believe it was the third photo shoot when you guys were hanging over the hole. And, okay. and Katie was crying. Um, okay, look, look, let's back it up. Katie was crying because she was afraid of heights. But while Zia Mora was shooting, Jay, instead of coaching her, was with Katie kind of helping her. And so when they got to panel, Zia Mora was like, listen, this is what happened at panel. I really didn't get much coaching because Katie's ass was over there crying and Jay had to go help her out. Was there anything that we didn't see from that moment? No, she was just annoyed because he's there supposed to be a director of the photo shoot. And instead, I mean, we were consoling her too. So I don't know why he had to go over there. There was, he didn't need to. So I understand her frustration because we're also in a competition and none of us are, well, I wasn't a model. She wasn't a model. So we don't know what the heck we're doing. Mm -hmm. Kind of direction we needed, we wanted. So I, yeah, I understood. Her. But I don't know if the two, like her, and, like if they both talked about it or anything. She was just pissed. She was just pissed. She was like, you know what? This is why my photo sucks. <laughs> <laughs> what? And also, you guys have all of this fresh in your mind. I haven't watched it since it aired. And I really? just stuff. So I'm really going to be digging in my memory bank to try to remember things. Now, listen, so, let me tell you about the people who watch. more than I do. <laughs> let me tell you about the people who, who, who are watching these interviews and they submit their questions. They write them in such a way that I feel like I, I'm taken right to the moment. Because they watch, like me, I still watch Top Model to this day. Like, it just came yeah. out yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't watched it since probably season five was the last one I watched. Mm. It just, it brings back way too much that I just am like, I can't. It's too much. It's too much for me. It's too much. Well, hopefully we can get into that. <laughs> I, will, I will try to remember as much for you guys as I possibly can. Perfect. Okay, so Daniel also wants to know why was everyone crying so much at Sarah's elimination? This was when Tyra um, had that whole music video thing and then everyone just like burst out into tears when Sarah went home. What was that about? Because we didn't think she was going home. Y'all thought Yuan was going home? We were shocked. We were like, what? Seriously? That was part of it. And then the other part, and I mean, I'm speaking mostly for me, is um, by that point, we all gotten really close. Mm -hmm. So we were really upset that she just wasn't going to be with us anymore. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was, and it was getting to that point where we were all getting really exhausted. And also eliminations, you guys don't realize, like, we've been there for, like, 8 to 12 hours. Just Good sitting, just waiting, just sitting and waiting for them to set up and, like, wait for them to show up wait for the judges to show up so we're also exhausted <laughs> so we're probably just like can we go to sleep now is it time for us to leave right we're tired and hungry we have to go do whoever who knows what tomorrow so it, there were just a lot of different it was reasons. all different things so yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take this opportunity to segue into mm -hmm. um, a moment that we saw on camera of you Mm -hmm. when um i believe it was after a makeup challenge or something like that and camille looks over and she's like shandy are you okay and you were like passed out on the floor and <laughs> had to receive like assistance and electrolytes and, and stuff like that was that like what happened because a lot of people love to talk about how the top model producers don't feed the girls they don't let them pee they they lock y'all in closets and turn off the lights and stuff like that was that what <laughs> Listen, I think you see where we're actually sleeping. <laughs> what are you drinking? Are you having a little cocktail? I'm having a beer. So, cheers cheers to my type of girl. Here's to you. Are you having a martini? What are you cheers. having? What are you having? A margarita? Um, my friend put some type of poison in his cup. I don't know what it is. He says the margarita, but he he knows I've had a long day, so I don't. Yeah. Know type of sin is in this, but I'm going to drink it and ask for forgiveness in the morning. Yeah, that's so very nice. Mm -hmm. So, Shady, were they starving you? Is that the reason why you were sprawled out on the floor like a fallen pigeon? Um, so, no, I mean, they fed us, but the whole thing was we were getting maybe three to four hours worth of sleep. Mm -hmm. 
plus completely stressed out all the time because we never know what we have to do until we have to do it. So we, there's mm -hmm. So we get there. I haven't slept. I don't think we had eaten yet at that point. Um, they were just like, get up and we got to go. And I think like, depending on what time you woke up, usually is how you ate. So I think I probably slept and then it was like, oh, shoot, I have to get up, I have to get ready to go. And then when we're putting on the makeup, I'm near the whole time I got pushed all the way to the side next to this super, super hot lamp. So when that was on me for like, you know, and we didn't shoot it once, you know, we're shooting it multiple times. So I'm just like, oh. and I'm only 110 pounds too. So take that into consideration at the time. So everything combined, I went to go sit down and I just was like, oh, <laughs> like, it just collapsed. It was only a couple seconds, and then they all made it a big deal. <laughs> they were like, Shandy, please help. Shandy, are you okay? I'm like, dude, <laughs> hot. Like, get me water. I'm hungry. Uh, and then, um, you know, because it's a show and there's insurance liability, I had to go to the hospital. Mm -hmm. I had to go get, and I'm like, I'm fine. Just get me. I just want food. Mm -hmm. Food. Um, so I spent half the day at the hospital, which was kind of amazing just to kind of be away from everything. <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's right. I go get whatever I wanted to eat, and I went and got Burger King. <laughs> and came back, and they were like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, I'm just dehydrated, and I needed food, and the heat didn't help. And I was like, I got Burger King, y'all. Right, bitches. What you all eating? Garbage. <laughs> yeah, that uh, is funny. <laughs> but so no. listen playing it up they play it up jalen hill is asking <laughs> yoana was quoted saying camille was much worse in person than what we saw on camera a lot of questions about camille of course of course so they said yoana is quoted saying she used to strut around in lingerie and hold our production jalen <laughs> hill wants to know how bad was I camille that she would do that. <laughs> camille will walk around in lingerie <laughs> But she would, yeah, she would. <laughs> Cackle. I forgot about that. Cackle. She would. She would just wander. I mean, she is a good looking woman. So, you know, I wasn't mad about it. But I don't think it was a whole <laughs> of production. Uh -huh. I, I just knew the two of them didn't get along for whatever reason. Like, there was always some kind of butting heads between the two of them. And I don't know where it came from. It just, I think, with like the moment we got to that apartment, like, they just <laughs> rubbed the wrong way you know what it, it could have been because you know i was watching as i'm re-watching it i was like yo wanna looked like a model like she was just was beautiful yeah. but camille also had this very like don't fuck with me i'm coming to win this type of attitude so maybe that's probably what it was it was two titans going at it yeah and she was like you know she was super calm they're both super confident mm-hmm own regards um they were a little bit different in their confidence but yeah i think it was like the two heads rearing like they were the two that were like we're here we're winning and i'm over here like what do you <laughs> <laughs> this is fun <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> that's funny so listen so i don't know how to ex oh excited to be here excited to be here when you watch this on youtube i love how you spell your name so they are asking, we saw the final three girls do a, feed, a fitting for D squared. Did Shandy get to walk in the final fashion show? Because Jay told us that even, like early on, even though we didn't see the girls, that they still will put the eliminated girls in the fashion show just so they can have bodies. So did you walk in the final fashion show? I did. It was so much fun. And she just was like, because I finally did a decent walk, I guess. And Jay was like, yeah, Shandy, you go. <laughs> But it was fun because it was like I was eliminated, so there was no stress. I was just having so much fun. And I only got to, I only wore one outfit, and then we're there, you know, rooting the other girls on. So it was just so fun. Like, so, so that means Camille got to walk in the final runway. We all did. We all walked, except for, I think, the first, who was the first one eliminated? Beth. Because she went home, I think. Wait, so all of the girls were, all of the eliminated girls flew to Milan too? Yep. We were all, they were all there. Which I didn't know until I got eliminated. I got eliminated and I walked out into, like, the next day into the reception area and all the girls were sitting there. 
<laughs> oh my god oh my god like us and then i was like oh my god you guys have been here this whole time they're like yeah because they had to keep everything a secret Mm. they flew everybody over and they were like oh no we did we thought you were gonna make it into the top and i was like man i was ready to go <laughs> you were ready to go why ready to go i wanted to go even before i wanted to go before that elimination why i tried i tried why were you so ready to go yeah no why okay Everyone and we're gonna get into that because i have some glisten oh, i read jay manuel's book and i don't know if you know but so there's I, a moment in his book that, of course, harkens back to that moment. Mm -hmm. And. Which has nothing to do with him. I don't even want, what does he say? Or I'm just going to get his book and find out. Oh, no, I'll tell you. I don't mind. <laughs> listen, I, listen, I'm not a reporter. I'm just a nosy bitch. <laughs> what is I'll tell you. Yeah. That's slightly messy. Because that's messed up. How do you be talking about somebody else's thing? You don't even, you weren't even there. You wasn't even there. Okay, well, just give me... <laughs> <laughs> Shady, where are you in the world right now? I'm in Brooklyn. Mm, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, okay, so listen. We can move uh -oh. on. And also tell me if you're just like, let's move on. We can talk. Like, oh, this Shady, listen, again, I'm not a reporter. I went to school to study music and the voice, and I create content oh. for people. I'm just a nosy bitch that just knows how to ask the questions because I'm quite <laughs> messy and petty. So, listen, I want to hear everything you have to say. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> yes, yes. Honesty is the best policy. Oh, my policy. God, Mr. J's in trouble. <laughs> and he's going to text me and be like, what did she be saying? I was like, listen, Jay, I don't know. Okay, so listen, back to the question. So, Daniel Mendez, shout out to Daniel Mendez, is asking, how was your casting process from the beginning? Like, what made you, what made you audition for the show? And then what was that? I'm leaving home from Walgreens because it's... Before you answer, <laughs> I love Top Model. Mm -hmm. I love Top Model. Second favorite show of all time. Charmed is number one. Nice. But ch Top Model, no, they can beat the fuck out of an idea. If I heard Shandy worked at Walgreens one more time, I would have screamed, peed on myself, and rolled around in a pool of safety pins i don't know anyways i already asked the question <laughs> how was your casting process from the beginning <laughs> like <laughs> yeah girl how was your casting? <laughs> you and me both you and me both talk to me girl talk to me <laughs> what the fuck you put in this bitch but i'm about to get a truck <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. So the reason why <laughs> to answer the question, the reason why I auditioned was because my boyfriend's time, Eric, who's on the show, who I was dating while I was on the show, all that, you know, he had watched the first season with his mom and his sister over the Christmas holiday prior the mm -hmm. previous year. And he's like, Oh, you should totally, it was like on some like local cable show there was an ad like oh there's a new show that's casting go to the mall on this day this hour and whatever and i was like i'm not doing that i won't get on there he goes you should totally do it you this is a good show i really like that show so <laughs> don't we love men oh gosh and, idea. <laughs> i mean he believed in me so oh. i half work I told my boss I was going to be late. We went down to the mall. There was a sea of people mm -hmm. waiting. And I'm like, looking at all these girls, like, no way. And I almost left twice. Almost. Mm. Stayed in line for nine hours. Finally was seen. I had no idea what I was supposed to do when I got in there. Because by the time I got up, like, the girls were coming out super fast. So I was like, what's going on so it wasn't until like five seconds before i had to get in front of the casting director and the camera did i know what i had to say so they were because i heard the girl in front of me and it was like say your name say your age say why you want to be on the show and like what you do for a living so i got in front of there and was like i don't want to work at walgreens anymore like because I, I didn't know what i was going to say so i just like screamed it <laughs> the casting director started laughing and then we started talking and we just 
And I was like, this is going on a lot longer than what I've been seeing. So we talked for like a good 10 minutes and I just made her and the camera guys laugh. And then I left and Eric, I come out, Eric goes, that must've went well. Like you were in there for a while. I was like, I guess. And then I got a call like three weeks later. They were like, you got picked out of, you're one of 60 finalists. You're going to go to LA and uh, do like interviews for a week to find out who gets on. So, yeah. Don't congrats. Thanks. <laughs> That's pretty dope. That's crazy. That's pretty dope. It's so crazy. But you know what? You know, I, the, the people who watch me know I love a nice moment of inspiration. L listen, Shandy had to stand in line nine hours and almost gave up twice. And then look what happened. Mm -hmm. And it, the cast director believed in me. It was all tired yeah. of not having it. <laughs> And there's even moments where you, like Tyra actually talks about it, where she's like, I did, when I saw Shandy, I was like, whatever. Uh, but the casting director's just like, no, like give this girl a chance. Mm -hmm. I owe that woman everything. So. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to her. Be yourself. Just be yourself. Be yourself. <laughs> Shandy, so my gay mother is T.S. Madison. Do you know who T.S. Madison is? That sounds familiar. Hmm. Research her after this. I will. I shall. Hear me and tell me what you find. But one of her, her iconic lines is, um, be yourself, bitch. Step your pussy up. Yep. Get a job. Own a business. Suck a dick. Words to live by. <laughs> so Samir Salah is asking, and I thought this was really random, so I was like, is this true? She said, there are rumors you were robbed at a Walgreens by gunpoint. Is this gossip or is this true? That's gossip. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. So Zarina Dickens also wants to know, how did you feel about Yoana winning? I saw a lot of questions about this. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about Yoana winning? Mercedes and April discussed in their live that they did about the cycle that Yoana was chosen as the winner ahead of time. Hmm. So, okay. Uh... Let me start by prefacing that when we were filming like the last couple episodes, we got to just wander around this like big mansion that we were staying in and it was freezing because we had like nothing to do. We couldn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So they also did elimination in that house. So one night we were like wandering around and we're like, oh, oh, this is the room where we get eliminated. And like everything is is pre-written everything that they say is like already like what they're gonna say we found all their cue cards and everything and we were like oh okay and then this was before i realized how reality television works there's writers there's editors there's people that watch all the footage like you know we film for three four we film for four days and then there's elimination day all that footage is being given to people to help with the story, to get the story arcs, to figure out like all of it. That's how it works. That, I mean, that's how Top Model worked back then. No, listen. I, that's how all reality shows work, but I have a feeling that like they all have writers that are constantly working while the show is being filmed. So the reason why I'm gagging right now is mm -hmm. because- um... Shani's about to get a call from Tyra. <laughs> Yeah, right. She has. I haven't spoken to that to that woman. And like, <laughs> <laughs> All right, hour. so no, I'm, and and how I know that you're not lying is because I am a part of a situation right now. And when I stepped on set today, I was told I was give I was given a certain note, and certain words that you just said were used in that conversation, such as. I don't want to say because ain't nobody listen. But I I know you're not lying. Yikes. So what so, so, so how did so I you out you wanna getting chosen? Hold on, I, uh, hold on, bitch. Uh-uh. Back up. Oh, back up. Back oh, up. Done. Okay. <laughs> back up. Okay. okay. So you said you found a room of their cue cards and like they, they had just left them on the on the table that they sit behind. They just, just left them there. And and they said what again? Um, I mean, basically, it had just, like, little points for them to hit during, you know, like, notes for them to talk about to us, to talk about the photos that they were going to 
be judging and everything. Like it was already, it wasn't like they just saw the photo and was like, oh, blah, 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 blah. It was like, they already knew what they were going to say. So Shady, now I not, I'm not, I'm going to uh, a little bit. Mm -hmm. Again, a lot of questions I'm asking again, again, to all of you guys that um, I was really on the, only motivated by Jay's messy ass and his book is, <laughs> which I know you appreciate me saying that, is in his book, he talks about the other side of the show where, you know, things that even the contestants think are reality is really production, you know, working for a certain, um, for a certain outcome. Mm -hmm. Did you have that experience on Top Model? Besides this one that you just said? Um, I didn't think about it until many, many, many years later. But the whole, like, hot tub thing, that hot tub, we were there for a week. We've been trying to get that dang thing to work the whole week. Isn't it kind of suspicious that it just miraculously works on the night that they decide that they're going to invite those guys over? a little suspicious and then to also be like oh here's all this alcohol and you guys haven't been able to do anything okay well since you keep so saying it, the girl i'm gonna jump right in it uh, they like set up situations in the hopes that you're going to you're gonna re you're gonna be a certain way and sham tams they're right <laughs> <laughs> so listen shandy i'm just gonna shandy you know what when i come to brooklyn bitch <laughs> I'm taking you out on a date, and you better not say no. Now listen, I, I, am a gay yeah. man. I don't want I don't want no titties. I don't want no kitty cat. But I'm going to take you out on a date because I am enjoying this talk with you. Yeah. I'm now listen. I'm having so much fun. <laughs> I was reading Jay's book now, and in the moment, I'm just going to jump in it because we keep getting to it in the book. It talks about that moment through, a, of course, a fictional character. But reading the book, No Top Model, we know what the situation is talking about. Yeah. And basically, in the book, if my memory is serving me right, um, just so Jay won't get mad at me later, the little disclaimer, um, the, the person who's supposed to be like the Tyra in the book by the name of Keisha Cash is watching the girls on, like, um, on a monitor. And so Keisha Cash is basically, I believe... It was like she thought like everything was kind of boring. And so she was like, you know what? She told the producers to buy a bunch of alcohol and send it to the to, to the to the model where the models were living with male models. Yeah. And of course, there's this one girl, I can't remember her name, who sneaks not sneaks off, but goes off with another with the one of the male models mm -hmm. and they have sex. Mm -hmm. Of course, reading this, we instantly think of Shandy Sullivan cycle two. And so it goes to a moment where Keisha Cash sits down with the with the character and she's like reprimanding her on camera and you know, kind of embarrassing. Now, now the book is a little exaggerated and like what happens, like this really wouldn't happen in real life. Right. But basically what you get out of it is that the show set her up for for that outcome because um, they knew she missed her boyfriend and she was a quiet one and stuff like that. I'm not gonna ask her no question. I'm just gonna say, Shandy, go. <laughs> okay, so basically, we were just so excited to have any kind of interaction with anyone besides production and each other. So when they said, Hey, what do you guys think about you know, you know, those guys that you rode on the Vespas with? when you first got here and you went to all the go -sees. What do you guys think about inviting them over for dinner and like drinks? And we were like, uh, duh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, especially because like the guy that rode, that drove me around was so hot and we had such a great connection, but he didn't end up showing up. It was like the other guys. So I was a little disappointed at first. <laughs> And then I, because it was also like, oh, testosterone that like people, like dudes that we could interact with. Um, and they're all super I'm to all male college, so just imagine my struggle. Yeah, and they were so nice. So, um, you know, I don't think I ate that night. And then I think I had two bottles of wine by myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, somebody's like, uh, oh, whoa, the hot tub works. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
what are you talking about? And then they were like, oh, let's get in. And so like, we yeah. get in, and then I see like Mercedes and we had, you know, what's crazy is we, me, April, Mercedes had this conversation before we got in of like, let's behave ourselves. <laughs> so then I saw Mercedes and then like I looked at this dude and he looked at me and he just like grabbed me and I was like let's do this <laughs> and then April's like I gotta go I have a boyfriend bye which is what I should have done but that's not what happened and then yeah just it was cuckoo craziness and you know didn't really remember anything too much about it until I started sobering up later which is where you see me like on the side of the bed crying. Cause I'm like, Oh, I'm a stop. <laughs> uh, like, Oh no. And it's on film. Like I can't, uh, th you know, it was so many, like, that's why I was just like crying hysterically. Cause I'm like, Shit. I, have, I have a couple of serious questions to ask you. Uh, sure. My first question is, of course, everyone in the comments on YouTube, Instagram is like, did you have sex? Did you have sex? Of oh, course, poor, Eric. <laughs> poor Eric. Poor Eric. Poor Eric. And you know what? I'll, I'll be the guy to say, when I was watching it, I was like, is Miss Eric one of the girls? Because is she one of the girls? Like, is she part of my clan? Because she's giving Shandy a lot of energy right now. She was, she, he, Eric, <laughs> Eric was the most supportive person after that happened. Oh, dope. Good. After, uh, he had the, you know, he had his emotions, that emotional phone call, and he got all his emotions out, and there was all the snot and the crying. I was able to talk to him again on the phone, and he was like, hey, I'm sorry I called you bitch. It's just... You know, I know you're going through a lot of shit and you're super stressed out and you let your, you know, it got the better of you. Everything got the better of you and you're just a human being and I miss you and just get your shit together and win. And I was like, I'll try. And I, you know, I tried. So if you I don't mind me asking, what did happen between you and the guy? If you want to... Um, we ended up having sex for like five minutes in bed. And then I think we also were making out in the shower, but I don't really remember that. I just remember getting dragged out of the shower by production. <laughs> I don't remember why. <laughs> but now, my, my next I, there were, I think the production the production guys were so freaking awesome. Oh but dope. That's good. They were amazing. Like, especially the guys that had to film that ca that phone call mm -hmm. were just like, we're so sorry that we had to film that. It's our job. And we're so sorry. And I was like, it's okay. Like, don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, I just, I, after that, I told uh, production I wanted to go home. I was like, give me a phone and go. So I'm, I'm going to ask you two, a two-part question. What support did you get from anyone after that, um, after that incident, whether it was the cast or production? And did Tyra have a conversation with you about that? And if she did, what was said about it? And you know what? I'm going to I'm, I'm throw a, a, a fourth one in there. And did Ken Mock come talk to you? And if he did, what did he say? Now, Ken, I don't got nothing against you. I ain't never met you in my life, but the people want me to ask these questions. I'm here. The girl is here. And so we want to know. Okay. Um, so the girls were really supportive. They just want to make sure I was okay. Um, <clears throat> one of the main production guys, uh, after the phone call, I was so exhausted. Mm -hmm. um, he picked me up in his arms and carried me to, like, and they're not supposed to talk to us. They're not supposed to, they're just there to do their job. They're not supposed to break that wall, anything, get involved. He put me in bed, tucked me in, and was like, hey, I've been, I've cheated on somebody before. I've been through this before. You're going to be okay. I know it sucks because of the, the circumstance, but it's, it's like, you're going to be okay. And he made me feel better about it. I don't really remember talking to Tyra about it in a personal way. 
maybe we had a conversation about it. I don't remember. Um, Ken, I just remember talking about like, I just want to go home. And he's like, no, like, like, just, just try your best. Like, you know, try to stick it out as long as you can. Like, you know, we're almost done filming. And that's all I can really remember about that. For the most part, I didn't really want to interact with anybody. I just wanted to be myself. So, yeah. Okay, the people who are watching are tearing me up right now, and they want are to they answer. Yet, yeah, listen, th these girls are very vicious. <laughs> I'm used to it. I'm so used to it. I've d dealt with it since 2004. So, the top model fans are very vicious. So they're asking me, "Was Joanna a pre-select to win?" Was she? Uh, to be honest, I don't I don't know the answer to that question. I really don't cuz I wanted Mercedes to win. Um Oh, wanted Mercedes to win. So if she, I don't know, was she? I don't know. I mean, when we yeah, saw I her. <laughs> when We saw the cue card things. I think we were just kind of like when I saw that, I think it was before my elimination and I was all ready to go. I already wrote my letter, like, while they were talking about who they're going to eliminate. I'd already written my letter to the girls, like, I'm out. Because mm -hmm. like, I just knew. I was like, the way that they're acting and the way, like, if they have it already pre-scripted, this is the perfect time for me to go. Because I miss my boyfriend and everything that happened, I need to get back to a normal life, which is exactly what Tyra kind of says during my elimination. Which is like, I know you like, you like there's more important things that like you need to deal with right now I'm like okay I just want to go I wanted to go already <laughs> what are your thoughts on Tyra like just from that cycle and any other interaction you ever have with her like what are your thoughts about her so in the beginning I thought she was great and then when we when she started inviting us back to do the Tyra show was when I really got a distaste for her. Like, don't like her. Don't like her at all. Why? She, so I've never seen that episode where I cheat. I just, this is a preference. I don't need to see it. It's all in here. You lived it. Yeah, I lived it. I don't need to see it. So mm -hmm. she wanted to talk about that when I was on um, with Eric. She was like, oh, let's fly Eric out too. We'll talk about it. And we said, like, don't show it. You show it, we're going to walk out, like, mid-filming. She was respectful then. I went on the show again by myself, and we hadn't talked about it beforehand. I'm just sitting there, and then I was just like, Shandy, we need to, like, talk about something. And then it comes up on the screen, and I'm like, is she shitting me right now? Like, she knows. She knows. So I was, I was like, this fucking asshole, like, what <laughs> And she had the nerve, <laughs> nerve to be like, Shani, so like, I noticed you weren't watching that. And I wanted to go, yeah, because you know I've never seen it. You're just doing this because you don't care. You just want a reaction out of me. Like, I'm a human being. This was something that, like, affected my life. And she, like, wouldn't hug some of us. Like, when, like, she wouldn't say hi to us when we would show up on set. She was just like very, I was just, over, I'm over her. I've been over her for a long time. So there, that's my thoughts on Tyra. Boom. I don't think she's a very nice person. Um, so V Green wants to know, did you keep in contact with anyone after your cycle? Uh, Ziamara, uh, cause she was in New York too. Shout out uh, to Ziamara, shout out to her. Yeah, she's amazing. I haven't spoken to her in a really really long time um but we used to hang out when I first moved to New York back in 2004 and then we kind of just lost touch um I've reconnected with Mercedes in April and Janasha shout out to Janasha shout out to Janasha um so V Green also wants to know um, and a lot of people wanted, a lot of people ask this question. Like, I saw questions, like, comments about, like, you signed to Trump model something. But a lot of people really wanted to know, what was your post-top model experience like 
in your pursuit to um, be a model, to work as a model? Like, what was that like? And I'm going to add that and say, and ask you, with what happening, what happened to you on the show? Because that was that's that's a big moment on that show. Mm -hmm. How did that also affect you, and how do you think that affected your career? Hmm. Well, I mean, it definitely affected my relationship with Eric, who moved to New York with me after the show aired because I did get signed with Trump Model Management. That's a real thing. Um. The, there were some agents there that loved, they were fans of me on the show. They reached out. They're like, would you move out here? Yeah. I mean, I at least want to try it. You know, why not? So I moved out here and I had a really, really hard time getting booked because every go see I would go to, they would recognize me from the show and they would say, yeah, now you should stick to TV. We want somebody that's not so known that's not a reality like person. And I'd be like, but like, I'm here. Like I have a legit agency that's backing me. Like, so I didn't really work, which really sucked. Cause back then nobody wanted reality TV stars on their campaigns. Not like they do now. Yeah. It, it, it's a it thing now. It's a thing now. So yeah, it, I, at, you know, uh. sucks. so they just didn't. And also I don't think my agents knew how to really market me. I think if they would have marketed me more toward more TV stuff, I probably would have worked more, but they didn't. So I ended up like when my contract was over after a year, I was like, I'm done. I'm done. So and then, yeah. and then you, you started doing what? I've done all kinds of stuff since then. <laughs> I mostly DJed. Um, I do remember seeing that somewhere. You being a DJ. Yeah, I do remember seeing that. I was a DJ. I was a trans DJ in Kansas City, but they never talked about that on the show because that would have made me cool. They don't talk about that ever because they're like, here's Frumpy Dumpy Shandy from the Midwest. <laughs> Who worked at Walgreens? God <laughs> damn it. Shit. You know what's funny is Walgreens at the time so right after the show aired walgreens was i was gonna be their spokesperson which man if that would have worked out shoot i'd be i'd be good because you know we don't get any money from the show mm -hmm. so right, hold on wait wait pause yeah you guys don't even get an, an appearance fee like per episode no 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 that's why reality shows started getting really big it's because networks realized that they could get a cast for free and own everything and not pay them anything unless they won. That's why reality shows started getting big. Because you know how much money I'd be making on like it being aired all the time? Goodness gracious. Um, but anyway, <laughs> wait, see, this face. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Let me tell you, Shandy, listen, I ain't no big star, but I'm somebody, and I am on a, listen, I told the motherfuckers, bitch, I ain't shooting, it. let me stop, for, for, for they fire my ass. <laughs> listen, Shandy got me over here drinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm on beer, too. Shandy, <clears throat> can I be very transparent with you right now? Sure. Is that okay? Yeah. Like, so, can I, so, when I first started this journey of, um, when I first started this journey of doing these interviews with people, I'm not going to lie. I'll be very honest with you. And I'll be very honest with everybody who, who's watching. I wanted to stick to chocolate girls because I always felt like as a fan growing up, of course you root for what you can identify with the most. And of course I'm black from the South. Naturally, I will identify with someone who looks like me. Right. Um, and of course I've grown up, I've traveled around the world. I've worked with all you know, sorts of people and stuff like that, which has brought me back to this moment um, of talking to you, talking to girls who I say this all the time, people hear me say this all the time, Top Model really played a big part in my identity as a young gay because it was only like one of the few shows where I could get, you know, I could feel my oats. And it's the beauty of just talking to you right now and being able to connect with you. And I'll I'll go on the books and say, this right here is my favorite interview I've done so far. <laughs> I've never met you. I've never touched you. But there's such an energy with you that is so beautiful. Um, 
that I'm just so enjoying right now. And I hope people who are watching this, who, 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 who've watched the previous ones and who watch the future ones can just see that this right now is very beautiful to me. And I'm very, very, very extremely grateful right now. Oh, that's so amazing. I mean, we could just, if you just want to FaceTime me sometime and just talk about all this, we well, don't have to do a lot. No, girl, no, girl. I'm, girl, I'm, <laughs> Call me be like, this, I'm gonna ask other questions. <laughs> really? You're like, so after we talked to Shannon live, we were on there for like two days. <laughs> no, but I'm just, I'm just really enjoying this. Like, thank you for, thank you for this. Thank you so much. Of course. You're really blessed, Mar Okay, listen, back to the questions. Okay. <laughs> Thoughts on Miss J? Thoughts on Mr. J? <sighs> I mean, my only perceptions of them are from, like, you know, I haven't spoken to either of them since the show. So they were both helpful in their own respects and, like, did what they could. And, and we didn't really talk to them too much. Because for the most part, when people like came and did their spots, then they left, mm -hmm. except for Janice. <laughs> Janice was like the only one that would stick around and <laughs> stop talking to them. And she's like, I'll do whatever the fuck I want. Like, I'm Janice Dickinson. I'll talk to them if I want. And she was always like encouraging, like, you guys, I know it's really hard, but you guys do a really great job. She was awesome. And so anytime everybody's like, oh, Janice is such a bitch. I'm like, no, she's not. She was, she was good to God. And doesn't give a shit and says what, she, what comes to her mind. She's a bitch. No, she's just an honest human being. She doesn't care. <laughs> Janice didn't give a fuck. She didn't give a shit. She was awesome. I loved her. I love her. <laughs> Listen, so a lot of people ask, um, in the comments about Janice and a, a lot of people are asking um, did you feel like you were Janice's favorite or like Janice really liked you? I think so. I, I, I mean remembering some of her comments that were just so that made me feel so good about myself and what I had done that week. Uh, I did think she was kind of rooting for me a little bit. I think mm -hmm. she, you know what this is a little you know, Midwestern girl who nobody thinks can do good in this competition. You know, even the girls themselves, like when they first saw me, were like, she's going to get eliminated like first or second, <laughs> you know? So I think she was like, you know what? This girl's going to prove y'all wrong. And I did. No, Shandy, let me tell you something. Um, You were kicking ass cycle too. Like you were <laughs> kicking ass. I did. I did. Okay. Okay. No, you were kicking ass, girl. Like, you were dope as fuck. Like, you <laughs> looked... And you know what? I... So, watching the show, I, early on, like, just re-watching it, I could tell who was going to make it to the top five. I knew Joanna was going to go, just mm -hmm. based off the editing. I knew that you were going to make it because you just... You had this, like, very sleek, model-esque, almost... with the, When they dyed your hair blonde, you almost... I want to say out of this world but you just look like this like ethereal like creature i was like shandy's gonna get it. shandy's gonna get into the top yeah Mer mercedes had a great story so i knew she was gonna get in into the top and she took good photos camille's mean ass was definitely gonna get into the top because she was just mean and she was gonna get into the top and april took great photos like you group of girls were dope as shit yeah we were pretty good <laughs> <laughs> yes ma'am so a bunch of people are asking this question right here. Excuse me. Again, I'm not an interviewer. I'm just a nosy bitch. You are a really great interviewer, though. This is how interviews should be. Genuine. Well, you know, Shannon, because I don't give a fuck. You know, I just don't care. And Janice would be really good friends. And I just want to know. You know, I just want to know. <laughs> the worst that you could tell me is, I don't want to answer that. And I'm like, okay. Why wouldn't I want to answer? I, I find that so... I mean, like, I... Okay, it's one thing that I've, like, never seen that episode, but, like, I'll talk about it, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be, like, it's a part of my life. It's a part of who I am. It's a mm -hmm. part that has made my life. You know, I've learned from that. That's something yeah. I've learned from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, 
I'm never going to talk about that. That's not a way to grow. You don't grow if you can't you process can't talk. things and talk about it. You know? One question I keep seeing pop up in these comments right now that wasn't in my notes is um, everyone is asking, was Nigel really flirting with April? Oh, heck yeah. Oh. Yeah, and he talks about it. I don't know if you've seen um, April and Mercedes show that they do on Thursdays. I watch it sometimes. Yeah, did you watch the Nigel one where they ask him? <laughs> no, like, what did they say? I'm sorry. Straight up, well, Mercedes asks, because I, I think April's just too kind to ask to his face. <laughs> Mercedes is just like, so what was going on with you in April? <laughs> and what did he say? Like, she's a, you know, good looking woman, you know? <laughs> and basically, she looks like his wife. I was just about to say that. So oh, when cycles that, later, they showed his wife, I was like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. April looks like his wife. Yeah. And he's also a really, really kind and genuine person. And so is April. So, yeah, I mean, and he's hot. So I think we're all flirting with him. <laughs> to be honest <laughs> we were flirting with everybody because we we're just like i'm so stressed out hi who are you we're tired of talking to the girls <laughs> what are you doing we would mess with like the sound guys all the time all the time you know what um shandy i'll be very honest with you i can't promise you if my ass had flown to milan and had consumed two bottles of wine, and I hadn't had any dick in a week, I can't promise you I wouldn't have taken a little dance on the disco stick. I'm just saying. <laughs> I would have. I would have. Tyra, send me home. And like, girl, y'all only, only, only let me sleep for four hours. You're feeding me crackers and cheese and water. I got to do these fucking photo shoots and these interviews and being locked up in a closet. I was about to say something that was going to be very bad. Locked up in a closet and all that. Yes, where is the dick? <laughs> and then they're like, here, it's on a silver platter. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I yes. mean, oh, bless her. Bless her heart. She was very strong and like, no. But I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, y'all during cycle two, participated in something that's so polarizing in top model history and that is Tyra Banks's music video. <laughs> what were you thinking in that moment when you were briefed that this week's photo shoot or whatever you're being judged on is you dancing in Tyra Banks's first music video? Well first I was like I want to hear the song and then <laughs> We were like, oh, fun. I love dancing. You know, I'm a DJ. Mm -hmm. Favorite kid from the Midwest. I wanted, like, I love dancing. So I was just excited to, like, do that and just uh -huh. the video. I was like, this is freaking awesome. Uh huh. Um, so I had a lot of fun with it. I had so much fun. Um, but yeah, I was like, what is she trying to do again? You know what, Shandy? I don't give a fuck what any of y'all say. Move your body, bitch. I will, I will, I will, I will work out to that right now. That's a catchy song. I anyone hear any of the other songs on the album? <laughs> I've never heard any of the rest of it. <clears throat> Has any? Have you? Is it good? I don't know. I guess I'm gonna have Shady, to. Shady, you my type of girl. I'm gonna have to download it after this. Shady, you my <laughs> type of girl. <laughs> I'm Shady, you are my type of girl. <laughs> yes. yes, Shandy. <laughs> Is that like her one-hit wonder song? I mean, no shade. I don't got no beef against Tyra, but I mean, one hit wonder means it had to be a hit first, right? <laughs> it's a good song. We shouldn't be wondering about it if it was a hit. I'm just saying. That's true. <laughs> uh, but she didn't have a she didn't have a sophomore album. No, I don't think she came out with anything else after that. <laughs> <laughs> Shandy Simon. 
listen, I'm going to get this thing going because I will fag out with you all night. Mm -hmm. um, but listen, <laughs> what was your favorite photo shoot from this season? Ooh. Um, I really, really liked the first one with the naked body paint. Uh -huh. Number one, it was really liberating to be just naked. Mm -hmm. that all day mm -hmm. <laughs> and to get body painted is really fun and really cool and we just looked majestic we all looked amazing amazing yeah everyone looked good on on that set uh and then i really liked when we were suspended because it was scary and we didn't have anything underneath us to catch us and we were stories up so there was like no net or anything, which I'm shocked that they didn't have anything. So that's also probably why Katie was like a little scared because we were all scared. Because if that thing broke, it was dead. done. We dead. So um, that was fun because it was just something like I don't think I would ever thought I would do. Um, and then, you know, the Milan one with the big hair. I mean, I felt so good in that little pink dress mm -hmm. had no underwear on so i was flashing everybody <laughs> <laughs> i don't even remember what oh i couldn't have underwear on i forgot my nudes that's why but just the being in that that atmosphere and doing a shoot and just like looking good and feeling good like was and then seeing the photo it was like <laughs> Yes. It was so good. Except for Can't it took me I'm living right now. Because that was my hair that they basically just teased with extensions and the extensions they glued in. Uh-huh. So it took me two nights to get that all out. But, get it out. But, but dang, that was fun. That was fun. It was just like it was just a beautiful place. And yeah. Those yeah. would be my three favorite so listen shani i'm not gonna hold you girl because i will go all night i'm gonna answer i'm gonna do this guys so right now i'm answering instagram questions i have eight of them that were down here i'm gonna ask and then i'm gonna ask my closing question for shandy shandy you were beautiful tonight this was freaking amazing uh oh okay so oh praxis underscore astrology wants to know can you talk about the labor conditions of top model were you able to have downtime from filming Yes, we actually had a lot of downtime. Um, there, I don't know if you saw the episode where, um, where were we at? Well, we just had a lot of downtime. So like, we couldn't really like watch TV or mm -hmm. like, music out loud because of rights and things. So right. like, because we're constantly being filmed. Mm -hmm. So it, I would just like listen to my CDs because it was all about CDs then. And then um, we would just talk with the girls and practice walks and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, like, when we went to dinner with RZA and ODB, which was one of the highlights of my life ever, I never thought I would meet either of them. I was, like, the only one that freaked out, though, because I thought uh -huh. they were. And I was like, are you kidding me? We're going to dinner with who right now? Rizza and LDV, yes. Let them know, Shandy. Ooh, and we're like picking some of this huge freaking limo. And we went to dinner with them. It was one of the funniest experiences I've ever had in my entire life. Because we mm -hmm. went to a French restaurant. <laughs> but we got to have downtime with them afterwards, which was uh -huh. great. Just kind of like we went to their studio, uh, which was in downtown uh, New York. And mm -hmm. like got to see his entire studio. And just like hung out in the back of this limo and drank with him. And he invited us to a party, but we couldn't go. Because producers were like, no, you can't go. You have to get up early. And we were like, we don't care. Right. <laughs> so yeah, we had a lot of downtime. Like there was one night where we got to go to a bar in Soho and have fun. And me and Samara had like a really good time. And we got a little too drunk. And we we're like really pissed about the next day because we were hungover. Yikes. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of downtime because you're just waiting for them to get ready. You're waiting to get for them ready. to get their shit together. So, 
a lot of it, most, I'm going to say like 75% of it is waiting. Yikes. Underscore she is Brit wants to know, did you get asked to be on All Stars? Yes, I did. Ooh! I did by the exact same casting director who cast me originally. And we had a really good catch up. And I said, well, how much are we getting paid? I know that's fucking right, Shandy. You was like, where the money at? Those, oh, well, so it's like you get like 1500 an episode if you make it. Like if you make, if you get onto the next one. And I was like, I'm not doing this for anything less than 50 grand. 50 grand, not doing it. And uh, they actually sent, so I used to do karaoke in the Lower East Side for a long time, I used to host it. Mm -hmm. They sent someone from production to come and try to convince me to do All Stars. And, and I you said, said no. I said, I told them 50 grand or I'm not and doing I'll come it. do it. Yeah. And they had 50 grand. Right. They had 50 more grand. Than that. I thought that was on the low end. And I was like, no, I'm not going through all that again for you to own every right to it and not get anything in return like that's ridiculous right 17 15 1700 and then minus all the fees come on now that's ridiculous no. do, do you regret being a being on top model never never i mean i get to meet amazing people like yourself like people I probably would never meet. Mm -hmm. And I have, I, I generally have incredible fans, like super supportive, really cool, really kind, really nice. I've met a lot of people over the years. I have a lot of best friends now because like they were fans and then we met and now we've become best friends. And like have, you and I. Yeah, exactly. But like, I don't, who knows if we ever would have, come across each other's channels you know mm -hmm. so no i don't regret it at all and you know and that was the thing um i was trying to articulate earlier maybe because i've been drinking this poison the poison <laughs> that my friend has given me but you know top model as you know as much as we dissected and cut it up and flip it and all these other things top model was great in what it did and it did it, like in this moment bridge so many different gaps and people and backgrounds and things that normally wouldn't intersect um and when they do intersect there's such a beauty about it like in this moment right now that i'm appreciating so i concur with you mamas yeah exactly and then why regret it? I mean, I there was some fun stuff that I did on that show that I'll probably never get the opportunity to, you know, to do again. So. So know. my last question that I'm now asking all of the girls, if Shandy and tw Shandy in 2020, right now, this Shandy, especially, especially this Shandy <laughs> right now, had the chance to stand before Tyra Banks, what would she say? Why are you so mean? Like, that's just the first thing that comes to mind. Why are you so mean? Like, why don't you care? I know it's a harsh thing to say, but I mean, to be honest, I felt like she didn't treat us, a lot of us like real people. I was going to end the interview, but <laughs> That prompted me to ask you another question. So in Jay's book, mm -hmm. the character who you would easily relate back to Tyra Banks, and everything she does, there is a motive to it. So mm -hmm. she'll do things that the common person or the person who's not thinking will think, oh, you know, she's authentic or, you know, she's doing this because she cares and things like that. When in actuality, through dialogue she would have with other characters, she's doing it because she has herself in mind. Do you think that is the case with Miss Tyra Banks? Do you think Top Model was really was really like a vanity thing for her or something to really propel her and not what the goal was of the show? I don't think, I think in the beginning, I think for her it was an opportunity and it was an opportunity for her to pursue 
a lot of other things that she wanted to do besides modeling, which, and she came out with an album. She released music. It gave her a platform to reach more people. And then I think she just, and then it's like, okay, now you want to be Oprah. You want to have a, a talk show. And like, I think, and I feel like this happens to a lot of celebrities when they are just doing too many things and not focusing on like taking care of themselves. You forget that you're dealing with human beings. Like the things that happen to us on the show, like these are real things that are happening to us. Like they're not screwing us. We're living it and living in the moment and creating these moments. Like these are real for us. Like it's to you, it's just like a script and a show and with the end goal of like ratings and money to propel you to do something else that you want to do in your career. And, you know, like I said, we were talking about her talk show. It was like, if she just would have done a simple gesture of like seeing me and being like, hi, how are you? Give me a hug. I probably wouldn't have these thoughts of her that I do. But, you know, sometimes it's the little things. The little things are very important to maintain relationships with people. So, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. I'm, I'm good. You know, Andy, I am appreciative of what you just gave us. And it was very much so a high level of transparency. You know, um, not everybody's experience is the same. Not everybody has the same thoughts and things like that. And so as a fan first, I will always be a fan first of Top Model. And I will always give Top Model its just due in the role that the show played in my life. And a lot of people think it's corny when I say that, but it is true. Like, you know, Top Model played a big role in, in at least like the creative part of me and just identity. And like, even when I do certain like music videos and stuff like that, I remember certain poses girls did. You know, I can go <laughs> on, on, on and forever. But um, I'm grateful for this moment right now. And I'm thankful for you sharing, sharing with me your experiences and adding Shandy Sullivan into like my top model anthology. I'm dope now. Like I got Shandy motherfucking Sullivan French. Woohoo! Shandy, <laughs> I'm so serious about taking you on a date, girl. I'm when I come to New York City, I'm taking you on a date. Now, what would be popping, popping is because me and Ebony from Cycle One, who I interviewed earlier this week, have been like talking. If I can take both of y'all on a date at the same damn time, that'd be amazing. That'd be amazing. No, I'm going to try to, when I, the next time I step foot in New York, I'm going to build in a day into my work schedule to take Shandy Sullivan and Ebony Haith on a date. It's going to be a, um, I was going to say a double date, but it's going, it's going to be something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it'll be so much fun. And I've never met her and I'd love to pick her brain about her experience as well. Oh, and trust me, mama loves to talk. No I, shame. <laughs> we have each other like we have other people that we can talk to that know exactly what we've been through yeah and can like feel our our pain and our happiness you know in the same vein so that'd be really cool i'd love to meet her hey hey so so listen before i let you go shani to the people who are watching and know I'm, you know on this journey i'm doing what if i come to new york and take all the top model girls out on a date because i mean you should have you talked to kaylin yet what you know, you know, we don't, we did it. We didn't talk, but we do follow each other. And I do comment, yeah. she comments back. But she's, she's like, she's not even that far from me right now. I don't think she was. So up. wait, so wait, you, you know <laughs> what I'm going to do? You know what I'm going to do? And y'all can, y'all can. There's so much of it. You gotta take us all I'm going to rent an Airbnb next time I come to <laughs> New York City on my, I'm going to rent it. And I'm going to invite every girl that's in New York City out to come and I'm going to feed you guys. I'm going to treat you guys to a very, very, very nice night. Oh, my gosh. You would. It will. <laughs> we just laugh the whole time, probably, and have the most amazing time. And I would be happy to be there. Shady, do you have any final words for the people? Thank you, everyone, for just being so kind and amazing over all of these years. I, I appreciate all of your kind words and being there and still given a crap <laughs> after all this time it's quite 
uh, mind blowing and spectacular, incredible. So I just want to say thank you to all the fans. Thank you so much. And thank you, Oliver. I'm so happy to meet you and talk to you. I've watched a little bit the show that you're on. And... Girl, you watch Chase in Atlanta? Of course. What you think, Shandy? I know who I'm talking to a little bit before I talk to them. And what you thought of me, Shandy? And you're so entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> well, Shandy, well, that's why the nerd is hired. Oh, I can't say that to you. I am there for you. I, I, the episode I was watching, you were kind of going through something. I was like, Woo, been there. <laughs> Shandy, you're no. my best friend. I'm going to send you my number. You better not disappear on me, bitch. No, give me your number. I'll give you my number when we're done. Everyone, say goodnight to Shandy. <laughs> ah. Listen, I'm almost near tears right now. That was so beautiful to me. And you guys don't understand <laughs> how fucking grateful I am to have these moments with these girls. I say it all the time, and I will say it till the cows come fucking home. That top model played such a big role in me being a young gay and just trying to find his identity and being this creative. It plays such a big role. And so the opportunity that I'm getting to talk to these girls and connect with these girls is so big to me. And this moment I shared with Shandy, oh my God, I feel... I'll be very honest with y'all. My friend Darius is over here. Say hi to, hi to people, Darius. What's going on? <laughs> I was having a fucked up day today. I was having a fucked up day, wasn't I? I was yeah, having a fucked up day. My, my day was horrible. My day was horrible. <laughs> and this talk I just had with Shandy really has been, it, it, I just, it was so beautiful and I'm so grateful to the universe. I'm so grateful to y'all. Listen, I'm going to sign off. Um, I'm just thankful. Thank you. Thank you guys for your support. Listen. We got more interviews on the way with these girls. We're trying to get to 24, baby, 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 baby. And we are surely on our way. I can't wait to tell y'all who I got for Cycle 7. And I did get another girl from Cycle 2. Anyways, listen, like I say, every time, be sure to pray and kegel because who wouldn't want a tight pussy? P.S. Tyra and Ken, listen, don't blackball me, girl. My career's just started. Don't blackball me, Tyra. Sandy said it. I did it. Come, come home.